I know that they used they used uh, Island Studios to record some of physical graffiti. They used Stargroves. They used Headley Grange in 71 or something like that, or 72, before the 1974 sessions that I did the final tracks of, of physical graffiti on. Headley Grange, according to Zeppelin, where they recorded the eight tracks, which were the new songs for physical graffiti, had its own atmosphere. It, it wasn't a, a studio in the way that we know a studio. It was a mansion, really. And Zeppelin seemed to like recording away from studios. Yes, they recorded at, at Olympic Studios, but and realistically, why those eight tracks work is because it was an atmosphere that went on. They were, it was a self-contained place. It wasn't a studio as such. So they had to improvise and augment and come up with ideas of the ways to record. And that actually helped them an awful lot because it meant that they could almost do anything they wanted. They weren't restricted to a control room or to a live room. They could go into a barn and record if they wanted to. Uh, and that is part of the beauty of physical graffiti. They wanted to record at Headley Grange for the drum sound. They loved the drum sound. If you walk into Headley Grange, you walk into this um, old farmhouse, a nice farmhouse though, uh, that it had, had a marble floor and it had uh, a stairwell, stairwell that went around three, I think three levels or something like that. Uh, like big, I don't think it was rectangle, it wasn't square, but it, it was a rectangle, but uh, it was probably about 30 by 40, something like that. And the drum kit was put right in the middle of the floor in that room. And, uh, and that's why they picked Headley Grange. Now, obviously, if you're using a house to record, you have to bring the recording equipment with you. And in some cases, I mean, you could have just brought a mixer and you could have brought the whole thing. It was easier to bring a, a truck where the acoustics were good inside the truck for, for to make uh, sonic choices and and everything else so it was kind of coincidence that i built ronnie lane's mobile and that they needed to do that pretty much the same year that i built it we would generally start around probably noon and work till midnight and uh lots of time in between you know playing cards and messing around and uh, i first started staying there when i first um, started uh, the, the project and I lived about 45 minutes or an hour away but sometimes they do a little partying and they'd wake me up at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning and want me to unlock the, the truck and start recording which messed up the whole next day so I decided that I would not stay there and when the session was over, I locked up the truck and drove home, so they couldn't do anything. And it went a lot, went a lot smoother after that. With Zeppelin having recorded at Headley Grange before, it formed a unique part of their lineage that began to reflect within their music. There were certain aesthetic mainstays that were always present throughout their work. Led Zeppelin had always been fascinated by the overriding influence of blues music. You put me down, going up the hill, leaving in your heart someday, and I'd stand still. People, you know, like just one bitter pill. Oh, yes, it is. Don't pity me. Says I'm not joking, ain't got a thing, you know, like. I want to be to your custom fire. You got to give me some of it. You got to give me some of it. You got to give me some of it. Boy, oh, you give it all of it. I'm not bragging, but it's understood.
drawing on such a roots-based American genre would prove an integral part of their own mythology. Physical graffiti took this blues fascination to a new level, taking on inspiration from artists such as Fred McDowell, Blind Boy Fuller, Bucker White and Brownie McGee, the opening track of the album, Custard Pie, would proudly wear this heritage on its sleeve. Custard Pie, heavy blues influence song. I remember when we cut that song, uh, because of the clavinet played such a vital uh, part in the feel, uh, Jonesy played clavinet instead of bass. So we actually cut it without the bass, played, uh, and we did it with another song too. Uh, they played, uh, so it was clavinet, bass, drums, vocal. And then when at some other point, I don't remember if it was that day, then we put the bass on to, to get the, the basic track together. Great riff, a little bit of Bo Diddley in there. Um, Plant doing his usual thing, plundering his, his immense knowledge of blues lyrics, uh, in, in, in this case, um, Booker White. Maybe for a day we gonna shake him on down. The blues borrowings in uh, Led Zeppelin are sometimes overstated. I think there's several things one can say about Led Zeppelin's relationship with the blues. First of all, you have to understand that the blues itself contains myriads of borrowings. In other words, among the original blues singers, and guitarists back in the 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s in America. People were borrowing ideas off each other all over the place. And the similarities that occur, particularly the musical similarities that occur within the blues, are partly the consequence of the fact that the basic materials are so simple. So in other words, if you are writing songs that are 12 bar blues and you've only got your three chords, the three basic chords you're using, it is inevitable that there's going to be a lot of similarity between, between stuff. Led Zeppelin collectively were very good at borrowing lots of influences, not always without credit, but the fact is, you know, it was about music. It's only really where it's gone on, if you look at the modern age, you know, plenty of bands take their riffs without, you know, being credited. Um, it's gone full circle, but, you know, for Zeppelin at that era, they were looking back to the 50s and, you know, the 40s with the blues artists, Whereas now, you know, bands, you know, the modern era are looking back to Zeppelin. So it's gone full circle. But credit or not, it always came out sounding uniquely Zeppelin. The blues steeped atmosphere of custard pie would seep into other tracks recorded during these sessions. In My Time of Dying was originally a composition by Blind Willie Johnson entitled Jesus Make Up My Dying Bed and had most famously been covered by Bob Dylan on his 1962 debut album. Well, in my time of dying, don't want nobody to mourn. All I want for you to do is take my body home. Well, 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 Transforming it into an 11-minute epic, it didn't take long for Led Zeppelin to put their own indelible stamp on the song. Woo! 